This actually came out of a conversation we had over doing this um, yeah. and saying what would be, I was asking people who had different setups, what they felt was the golden setup, the golden path. And of course the answer is everybody's got their own golden path. Um, and interesting, a lot of people have got golden paths which have altering bridges so that you get so far and they go, but this doesn't work quite right. Um, so. It was interesting to to talk to Rene, and you had that. This doesn't work quite right, and then you went away and did some more work. So uh, yeah, I did. I did. Uh, I I listened to your story about creating pass keys, and we were talking about um, how we could deploy code from out of Visual Studio Code to a remote yeah. server. There are many options available, and there's a very popular extension uh, which is deploy reloaded. And uh, that extension is unfortunately no longer developed. And it, you can specify a remote location based on the secure FTP with a username and a password. It doesn't accept uh, public and private keys. So uh, I went and searched for an option to be able to use it with public and private keys. And also looked at how I could use this inside um, um, Git and GitHub and that sort of things. And, uh, I'll try to share my screen. I hope that that works. Uh, so yeah, just before you do, Renee, I just want to yeah. say to people, um, you've been a real big user of PHP Storm and you've helped me in the past and we've got a channel in Mattermost at PHP Storm and Visual Studio Code. And what I was really fascinated was that as such a power user of that, you're using Visual Studio Code and what you seem to be doing is wanting to do everything you did in, in PHP Storm yeah. In Visual Studio Code, and that was really quite inspirational because what I want to do, and leading on for Joomla six and everything, I want to set have a setup where it's Windows, it's 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 basically Windows and um, Visual Studio Code, so that students and all that could all it's the most likely one that students want to have, yeah. um, and so that's what I've been forcing myself to do, and yeah. um, and you've done it, so off you, you said you're using a Mac, but, yeah, um, but off you go. Can you can you see my screen? Can indeed. You can. Great, because uh, my system asked that I should restart. Uh, uh, I should restart uh, Firefox, but that's unnecessary. So, for those who don't know me, um, uh, my name is René Krijgaard. I'm a full stack Joomla developer working at Legend BV, and Legend BV is a small uh, financial company in the south of the Netherlands, and we provide. Um, legal contracts for companies to protect their uh, financial assets. And we, I, I built an application for that to manage all these contracts, to create them and to digital sign them, whatever. And it, that's a Joomla Fire based web application. And I work on Mac OS. Um, um, I had under development all my tools for Windows because everything I'm going to show now is available for free. It's, it doesn't cost any money. You don't need to buy licenses or whatever. So, and I'm working on it to get it all up and running on Windows as well. Um, so my preferred editor for development is Visual Studio Code. Um, I've, I've been using VS Code for, for a long, long time. I, I know the shortcuts for keys. I, I've also worked with PHP Storm, but I, I couldn't get used to PHP Storm. So I stayed in love with VS Code and still use it today. And uh, there, are, there are a few extensions that I use a lot for development. The first and most important one is DevSense. And DevSense is a uh, uh, is a tool that, well, it, it makes VS Code act as if it's as if it is PHP Storm. It's got uh, IntelliSense. It's it's got it's got a whole lot of tools in it. Um, uh, it's got code completion. It's got IntelliPHP, so you can uh, easily write code. It's got continuous code evaluation. It's got the debugger inside. Um, you can navigate features, uh, there's code lens in it, you can rename, do rename factoring, all sort of things that are handy with, uh, with uh, within the code. I, I, on my work machine, I have a paid version of this machine. I usually also use the paid version, uh, but for today, I've installed the, the free version, so you can see what you can do with that. Um, 
Then I've got video, which is a code formatter. Uh, it formats code like a CSS code, HTML code, uh, JavaScript code. Really handy as well. Um, Git Lens. Git Lens is a tool uh, very, very comfortable when you use Git. Um, I've also got the paid version here. Not in, in this installation, it's got, it's got the free version, but the paid version uh, offers you <laughs> that much more. Um, I've got an extension called GitHub pull requests, so I can create pull requests straight from VS Code, uh, which I think is very handy. Um, I've got an extension called trigger task on save. With trigger task on save, you can define a task that needs to be run when you save a file. I'll show you later what, what that's good for. I've got SFTP, which is essentially a security key client inside VS Code. And I've got an extension called snippets. And snippets are just code snippets, really, really handy. Um, for example, I've, if I create a PHP file, then I can go to my snippets here and I, I'm, I'm working on creating a set of snippets. For example, uh, if I want to do a query on all columns, there it is. Uh, I want to query on one column, there it is. Uh, if I want to create a query with a join, it's like that. Or I want to do an insert with an object. Uh, so it, for me, it, this is a real game changer. Uh, uh, really, really handy to insert all kinds of uh, snippets in, in, in junior development. Uh, I'm also working on uh, the snippets for form fields. For example, if you want a file list, this is the definition for a file list. If you want a text area, um, these are the things I use a lot. Or uh, do a user, how do you do that? So that's, uh, and the great thing about these is that you can uh, export these snippets to a JSON file, and I will publish my latest my JSON file or this JSON file that I'm building and all my other tools later this week in a uh, in a public GitHub repo. So if anybody wants to use it, you you free to go. Please please do. Um, right, that is that. Um, what's next? Um, SSH config file. Um, an SSH config file is used to define and manage multiple SSH connection settings, and it allows configuration of multiple SSH connections to different servers. You can even allow, it even allows you to do a configuration of different keys for the same connection username. So let me show you what my config file looks like. I've stripped it a bit. So here's my config file. Um, I have multiple accounts in GitHub. I have a GitHub uh, personal account. I have a GitHub work account. And for today, I've set up a, a small demo website and I've created also a separate GitHub uh, uh, account for that. And with uh, SSH config, you can define multiple hosts. You can define what user to use and what private key file to use. So um, how does this work? When I want to connect to github.com, uh, then I can test that. Uh, here's the host name, github.com. And I can do then SSH github.com. And then it says, all right. I am a title. You have successfully authenticated, but GitHub doesn't provide shell access. So, with if I use this key, this ID ED two five five one nine Git personal, then I can it's, it's automatically linked to my personal GitHub account. Later on, I will show you how I can link another key to my uh, to my demo GitHub account. I've also set up two uh, uh, demo websites, and I've also created separate keys for that. So. Uh, you can define uh, the host name that you want to talk to with what username, with what key. You can, you can even specify a port here. For example, if you want to run it on some uh, strange port number, uh, because the GitHub, the SSD, the SSH server is running on another port. So it's very easy to to use that. And I think these config files can also be used on Windows. I'm not sure because I'm not that much of a Windows expert. Maybe someone can elaborate on that. Uh, then I'm going to move on. So I've created a demo project, Com Birthdays. It's a component for managing people and their birthdays. It's a Joomla 5 component and a module. And I initially generated the code with componentgenerator.com, which is uh, an, an online tool where you can generate Joomla 4 and Joomla 5 components. Uh, it doesn't produce the best code. It doesn't produce the most beautiful code. But if you want to set up something really quickly and simple, uh, you can use this as a as a tool to generate 
a component. And I've also created a GitHub repository uh, where the additional code modifications are. So let me show you that repo. Uh, that's here. This is a this is the Joomla account that I created, Joomla demo account, and here's the repository, convert days. And convert days has uh, some backend stuff, some front end stuff, and it has a module. Nothing fancy, just a very, very simple setup. So if I want to link my account to this GitHub repo, I need to copy my public key. I need to add that to my GitHub account. So to do that, I'm gonna, uh, I wrote a small script and go to the SSH directly and copy uh, the, the, the contents of the public key file. So let's do that right now. Go to the command line, paste this command and it's now copied. So then I go to my GitHub account and then go to settings and then go to SSH and GPG keys. I'm going to create a new key. Uh, Joomla, yeah. And I'm going to paste my key here, add SSH key. It's going to ask my password. And I've got one password running on my system with the pass key. So now I have my my key of my local machine now added to my GitHub account. So we can verify that by uh, checking the config file again. Uh, so close config. Um, now I can try SSH into this account. See what happens. SSH. And then it says, hi, Joomla demo. You have successfully authenticated. So now when I use, every time I use this SSH key, I'm talking to the GitHub account that's linked to my Joomla demo GitHub account. And I need that. And why do I need that? Uh, let me go to where is the presentation? Uh, here. Yes. I need that to uh, 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 link my computer later to this GitHub account. So what's my local development setup? Um, uh, locally, I have Nginx and Riot VP running with multiple PHP versions. Um, and when I do Joomla development, I work always with three environments. The first environment is my development environment, which runs on my MacBook. The second environment is the test environment, which runs online on a server where I and my colleagues can test the site. And the third environment is the production environment. And uh, each environment on my local machine is, uh, has its own folder below development slash sites. And uh, each repository is also stored in its own folder in development slash repos. And I created a lot of scripts, uh, uh, bash scripts, which I'm converting to Windows uh, to do all kinds of things on the command line. So if I want to go to where my websites are, I can type go sites. And then I do ls minus l, which is the same as there in Windows. And then I see um, there's a Joomla website there. There's a folder Joomla, CD Joomla, and here is a Joomla setup. And in this setup, I can do Joomla info. And it gives me information about what site it is, what kind of a site it is. This is a Joomla 152 site. Uh, this is the database name. This is the username, password. This is the DB prefix, and this is the path. So it, it gives me all kinds of handy information. I can create a database dump of this website by JDB, typing JDB dump. DB dump. Just one JDB dump, like so. And then it creates a backup of the Joomla database. I can also type J backup. Which creates a backup of the complete website. And the backup is then generated into a TG or gzip file. What if I wanted a normal zip file? Then I can do J backup minus Z. Uh, and that creates the same backup, but then in a zip file. So I've created all kinds of tools. And uh, like I said, I'm going to share them on a, on a public repo for, um, for anybody to use. So if I want to do local development on this repository, uh, the first thing I'm going to have to do is clone the repository to a local folder. Now, like I said, I have a, I have a separate folder where all my repositories are. Uh, go repos. 
And then here are my repositories. Uh, there's not much there at the moment. And to clone the, uh, um, the, the repository, I can type this command, git clone, and then it clones the online repository. So I do that, and it says cloning into convert dates. Uh, so we now have the folder con birthdays, cd con birthdays. And if I open that in VS Code, then I see uh, all the files that are there. There's the modules, uh, the, the front end component, the back end component stuff, uh, the license file, and the readme file. The readme start the extension because I've got an update there. So now I've got this repository local on my machine. And I, if I go to here, to source control, uh, then I see which branches are there. There's the main branch, which is linked to origin. And this is the remote branch, that, which is on GitHub. So I've got the local repository now linked to the remote repository. If anybody has any questions, please, please ask, all right? To use this component, we need to we need to add a website to uh, uh, to my local machine. So I have a script called add site, and this script uh, can create a website uh, with this command. So the name is birthdays. Uh, the PHP version is 8.3. I want to create a database called dDays, and I want to open this environment in my browser. So copy this command, run it on the command line. And now it has created the file on my machine. Uh, the file is in users, so they kind of develop and decide birthdays. It's got PHP version 8.3, and it's got a database up and running. But there's no Joomla installed because it's just an, an, an empty folder. Let me show you where the site is. Go to sites here and B days. There's nothing in it. There's only the index.php file. So the next thing I'm going to do is install Joomla. So to do that, I go to the sites folder, go to the birthdays folder, and now I've got a script called Joomla latest, which downloads and unzips the latest Joomla. So I copy this line, run it on the, in my browser or in my terminal. It's downloading the latest Joomla. Joomla was downloaded and unzipped in the current folder. Now let's see, here it is. Here are all the Joomla files. So if in the browser I refresh this, the Joomla installation starts. I'm gonna put it to English. Um, birthdays, that's the site name, uh, my username, email, password, email address, set of database connection, the database username was root, password is root, database for B days uh, and install Joomla. So it's now installing. Installation has finished. All right, open administrator. Log in with my username and password. And we have Joomla 5.3 running. That so, shows well, is the latest because it was only released about four hours ago. <laughs> yeah, my, my script just pulls the latest Joomla version um, off of the Joomla servers. Uh, always the latest version, so that's uh, that's just that. It's, there's nothing installed. It's, it's completely empty. So, um, to or to to um um to edit the code, um like I had here in, in, uh, in, in VS Code. I'm gonna shut this down out of here. You can create workspaces in VS Code and a workspace is just a collection of folders and, fi and, and files that you have inside one workspace. So um, there's a, I created a workspace file here, which is okay, yeah, you, need to, you need to add two folders to my workspace. First, the folder where the repository is, which is development repos com birthdays. And the second folder I'm going to add to my workspace is where the site is, which is development sites birthdays. So I'm going to copy this. 
Oh, no, I'm going to copy this first. So we're going to have to create this workspace file. And then copy this, like so. So if I check the repos folder now, there's the file called workspace .code workspace, which is essentially, if I open this in another editor, it's the same information. There's the, the repository and there's the site. So I can now open this in VS Code. And there you'll see, uh, maybe, then you will see, uh, let me delete this. Right. Uh, here's the, the, the con birthdays, that's the repository, and here's the birthday site on, the, on its own. So these are all the files belonging to uh, the complete website. Um, let me close these folders. So this is just the repository. Um, um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a branch in Git where to do development. So in the source control, here's my main branch it's now active because there's a check mark behind it i can say uh, create branch and i'm going to call this branch i'm going to call this branch maybe it's code here it is create branch and i'm going to call this branch develop and then create and switch to branch so now it's got um, a development branch which is now active and then I can publish this branch. This will automatically publish my local branch to my GitHub account. So I'm going to click here, publish branch. It's now published on GitHub. So let's check if we see it there. Uh, here, go to my account. Jimla demo account, repositories, con birthdays, and then we can go to uh, two, uh, branches here, two branches. So now we have the main branch and we have the development branch. Um, and this is uh, the active branch. Oh. Yes, anybody wants to ask, somebody wants to ask something or? No, okay, then I'll continue. Um, When I then modify code, this code needs to be deployed to needs to be deployed to another location. Um, and to do that, I created a script called deploy code. And let me show you what that does. Deploy code. And deploy code is a script that deploys code from a local repository to a local or a remote location. And the syntax is deploy code and then deploy mode what kind of mode you want and what environment do you want to deploy to. And deploy mode must be either local or remote or all local or all remote. Well, local means that I'm going to deploy my code to my local environment. Then remote means I'm going to deploy my code to one of the remote environments, the development or the production environment. And um, to use deploy code, I have defined a, a, a Tasks in, in VS Code, you can define tasks, and you have to have a file called tasks.json. And I have that file here, tasks.json, and this is the tasks file. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to explain how it works in, in a moment. Window, convert base. And here's my VS Code folder. I'm going to create a new file here called tasks.json. I'm going to paste the code there. So here are all, my, all the tasks that I have defined. And um, um, the deploy code script can either deploy um, a full set of files of a complete repository or all the files that are in one commit. And so the first thing I need to do is uh, these files for my component, my convertase component, are not yet present in the birthdays website. So if I go to components, there's no convertase here. So the first thing I want to do, I want to deploy everything that I have in my code to my local website. And to, uh, to define these environments that I can work with, I have a config file. Okay. 
CD deploy code. And uh, here are copy files. So birthdays local is, is, is just a definition. It says, what's the local repo path? My local repo path is users and a title development repos from birthdays. Now, where's my local local website, users, and a kind of development sites, birthdays. And what files do you need to ignore when you do deployment? You never must deploy git, vs code, git ignore, license, and readme.md. So with this in mind, if you see here, deploy full to birthdays local development, it says deploy code, all local, and use the environment file birthdays local. So let's see how that works. In vs code, you can do the command, Shift P, and then you can do run task. And the task I want to do is deploy full to local development. So I click that, and uh, the script has now copied my components, my administrator, and my modules folder to the website. So let's go back to the back end of the website. And then I can go to system and discover. And this, the website now sees, I see a birthdays component and I see a com birthdays module. So I'm gonna install that. So now the component and the module is installed. So I can go to components, birthdays, birthdays. So now let's add some birthdays. So uh, Renee, birthday, 1966-01-19. So you can new, Monique, 1967. 0511, say a new, and Bob, uh, 1996, uh, 11, 12, and Mart, uh, 1998, 10, 24. So I've got four persons. These are their birthdays. This is the, this is the person who created these birthdays. Uh, so now let's add a module that displays these birthdays on the front end. So we go content, site modules, P plus, and then I see here the mod birthdays module. So upcoming birthdays. And this is going to be posted in the module position right, sidebar right, and then save and close. And then if we look at the front end, we see the module here. So the upcoming birthdays is uh, Maud, who is happy, who is, uh, who is having an anniversary on October 24th, and she's becoming 26 years old. Bob, November 12th, on uh, coming 28th. Myself, I'm ready. I, I'm, I have a birthday on January 19th. I'm going to be 59. I'm Monique, my wife, going to be 58. So it's a really simple thing. It's a backend com component, front end component, and a simple module. So now that we have everything up and running, we can really do something with the code. We can modify code. Um, so how does that work? Um, suppose we don't want to display the age uh, inside this module. I, uh, I can create a parameter for that, but for, for the sake of the demo, I'm just simply going to remove uh, the, the, the year that someone will be coming out of the module. So I go here to modules. I want to use a template and the default of PHP. And here it says pen class birthday name, next birthday, and the birthday next age. So if I simply remove this and save it, um, then this code is uh, saved. And what you see here then, there's a change. One file was changed, and that's default.php, and we can commit that code. So you can see here, removed, uh, age display and then commit. It's now committed to the development branch and we can sync that change also to back to our online branch to GitHub. So we just do sync changes. And if we go then online, go to branches. And then uh, look at uh, console. To the branches here, go away with branches, and then to develop. Uh, and then we see here, remove edge display. So that's something that was changed in the, uh, in the template file. We can open that up, and then we see that this line has changed. And who did that? 
but that I get that, that that line was removed. But now we've only did the change in the local repository. It's not yet deployed to our local development site. So we can use our script for that. So we can say run task, and then we say commit. I want to do to do a, a, a deploy my commit to my birthday's local development. The the system automatically shows me the file the, the nine latest commits. Well, and the most recent one was remove age display, so I can type one. And then all the files in this commit are deployed to my local environment. So you see that the file that I was copying was modules, not birthdays, template, default of PHP. That was copied to my local site. So let's see if that's visible on the front end. If I refresh here, the age is removed. And somehow I see a small bug here. There's a, there's a queue here, which doesn't belong there. So let's see in the code. Ah, there's the queue. So I can remove this queue. Save, save the file. Uh, um, we immediately get a, a, a new changed file. At least that was that was what I would expect. Somehow it didn't uh, register this change. That's strange. <laughs> Am I on this app? Yeah. Okay, well, let, let's skip that for now. So um, the way it works now, after every commit, I need to deploy the code to my local environment. So um, I found that pretty unhandy. Uh, so what I did, I wrote another script. And that script is uh, copy code. And copy code is a script that copies a saved file to a local location. So let's see what that does, copy code. Um, that copies a file. In, uh, the environment is the same environment files that I used for uh, deploy code, and the file is the file that needs to be changed. And to use that, um, I also installed an extension called um, trigger task on save. So what trigger task on save does, it triggers a task that you define in your tasks file every time you save a file. So uh, let's install this. Uh, let's see if this is defined in my in my environment. Um, here is my environment, and when I see the tasks.json, um, the task is called um, copy code birthdays local file. So I'm going to put a label here, uh, copy local. That's the name of the task that I have defined. I'm going to have to change my workspace file, which because there it defines what task needs to be run. So I'm going to uh, go to the repo. And edit my workspace file. And here is the task that's going to be executed. Now, I call that task uh, copy local. So I'm going to insert that here. And then save that. So what this does is every time I save a file, this task is executed. It's a shell command, copy code, birthdays locals, and dollar file is the file that was saved. So if I go here in, the, in this file and I click save, you see that it executed the task in folder com birthdays, copy code, birthdays local, users when they have development repos, mod, mod birthdays, default of PHP. So if all is well, that queue should be gone now. And there it is. We fixed the we fixed the, the, uh, the queue display. So this is much easier for testing. Every time I change something in the code, it's immediately copied to my local file so I can immediately see the results. Well, the commit that I just made, I also want to, uh, uh, with this, I can also commit code to a remote environment. And how does that work? If I go back to my config files, cd, cd.config. cd.code. Uh, code. Okay. 
things. So this is all my uh, local files. So workplace development, it says the local repo part is my local repository. What SSH to config do you want to use? Well, as you remember in my in my SSH configs, cd dot ssh cat config, I have defined my birthdays development site as the host running at dev dot birthdays dot tuna demo dot nl. So if we go here, birthdays development. This is a site running online. You see here is still the uh, the, the, the age is still dis displayed. So um, in this configuration, I uh, now say the remote path is the path where the file is on the web server, uh, and you have to use this SSH config. So I can now do run task, deploy uh, a commit to online development. And he, then he asks, what, uh, 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 what commit do you want to Deploy. I want to deploy the removed H display. Now it's uploading, upla uh, uploading the files to my online environment. Here, dev .birthdays .demo .nl. And if I refresh here, the H is also gone. And at the same time, I can also deploy my code. Deploy to the to my Production environment, birthdays online production. Uh, deploy the same commit again. Now that's uploading to my production website, which is running here, birthdays production. Refresh it. And then the age is also gone. So this is a set of um, scripts that allow me to deploy site, to deploy code to a local site and to a remote development site or to a remote production site. I can even deploy it to, to any site as long as I've defined the, uh, the keys inside my config files. Um, well, where are we in the presentation? Uh, here. Right. So um, I've synced my local commit to remote branch. Uh, what if I wanted to create a pull request? A pull request to merge my development branch into my. Well, to do that, I go to my environment here. Uh, uh, and here are my uh, two branches, develop and main, on my local machine and on remote. I can refresh that. That should also give me develop and main. So now I want to create a pull request to merge my code from development to main. So I can go here and do a pull request. Uh, yeah. Uh, how do I do it like this? I want to merge Tumblr demo development to Tumblr demo. Oh, that's remote, I think. I'm here on development. Ah, here. Create pull request. Remove H display. This is not the, this is not what I meant to do. I want to use the uh, the GitHub thing. Uh, so I'm going to use local pull request branches. Tune the demo develop to main. Okay, remove H display. Uh, This is not what I meant to do. I just simply forgot how it worked. <laughs> Development, create pull request on remote. Oh, ah, GitHub. That's what I meant to do. Yeah, remove edge display. Ah, so remove edge display. Uh, removed. Removed the display of age field. Create. Then it creates the pull request. Uh, and then it says remove age display with pull request number one. Merge pull request. And uh, create merge commit. 
Joomla demo merged commit into, into the main stack of the job. So the pull request was created. Uh, let's go here, convert base, uh, pull requests. Uh, there's one closed, there aren't any more. Uh, and if I go to branches inside my, uh, my code, then we see that main uh, now also has a remove page display. And inside VS Code, you can now see that main, my local main, is two commits behind, behind the remote main. So I can uh, fetch, uh, pull these changes, pull with two commits, and then it pulls these changes from uh, the remote environment on GitHub into my local website, uh, into my local repository. And if I then switch to that branch, uh, uh, then I can see uh, uh, that the commit has been merged, default.php. So this way I can uh, do everything straight out of VS Code, uh, merge code to a, uh, uh, another, another branch, uh, push code uh, upstream and that sort of things. Um, Another thing uh, that the local uh, extensions that I have installed with DevSense can do is code formatting, which is really, really handy. Um, if I go to the code here, and for example, go to uh, template, no, to, to here. Uh, this is just a simple file, it's too easy. Uh, let's go to, uh, to the backend components, uh, source uh, model, and then the vertex model. Here's some code, it's formatted. Uh, what if we uh, reformat this? Like the acolyte goes there. Um, uh, I'm gonna shift these to the left. Uh, uh, and I want to reformat this part of the code. I can select the code and then say uh, format selection. And then it automatically gets reformatted to the Joomla coding standards. So, and that, that's what DevSense does for me. And in my settings, in my user settings, uh, you can see them in a uh, settings adjacent file. I have added all the PHP formatting rules to make sure that the code is formatted according to the uh, Joomla code style. So that's also available uh, uh, in, in VS Code if you want that. Um, last thing I want to show is uh, code debugging. Uh, and DevSense comes with xDebug installed. And to use debugging, you need to create a launch.json file in the VS Code folder. Well, how does the launch.json uh, file look like? That's this. I'm going to explain what the, the, this does. So in my VS Code uh, code, I'm going to create here a new file, launch.json. Paste this in here. And what this does is it says, uh, uh, I've now created a configuration called listen for xdebug. It's a PHP debugging. Um, it's uh, by debugger is installed on, 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 on my xdebug, it's installed on port 9003. And I created a port mapping here. And the port mapping maps my repository files to my website files. Um, you can also define excludes and excludes are uh, files or folders that the debugger needs to exclude but if you put an exclamation mark here that means uh, only look into these folders uh, so, and what that does what that does is it allows me to debug my repository code without looking at the rest of the Joomla code so let me show you how that works um, in the module um, Mod birthdays, I can set a, um, uh, a, a breakpoint here. I'm gonna, uh, now that the breakpoint is set, I can go to here, listen for X debug, uh, and then I can start the debugger. So I haven't installed anything else but just these extensions, and I start the debugger. So what the debugger is going to do, it's going to wait until the code passes this point. So let's go to the front end of my local website which is here, and if I refresh the screen, the debugger kicks in. 
Let me shift this a bit down. And uh, the debugger is now waiting at this point. And I have a help of I have a, a, a helper file inside my code. Uh, and in the birthdays helper file, it, it, it wants to execute the function get birthdays. And I can step into that. And then we can we can uh, debug that as well. So I can step through the code. It's getting the DB container. It's getting a today variable. Uh, so we can see really the value of the today code here. Here comes a really horrific MySQL query. And this MySQL query just extracts all the birthdays from the database um, and also um, giving the next birthday date and giving the next age sorted in uh, in a way that the, the first upcoming birthday comes first. So skip over this, set the DB query, execute the query. So now in the variable birthdays, we have all the birthdays from the database. Now I see here birthdays is an array of four. And here are the four results. And then you see more days first, next birthday 2024, 10, 24, next age is 26. So you can really step through your code um, by simply executing uh, uh, your code and setting a, uh, setting a, uh, a breakpoint, which is really, really handy. And I always had trouble um, getting the debugger to work in PHP Storm, but probably due to myself, <laughs> because I didn't really understand how to set this up in, in, uh, in, uh, in PHP Storm. But in each code, I find it really easy uh, to use. Um, you can also create a configuration that you can debug everything in your local website. And then you would have to create another launch here. Um, uh, so you can uh, uh, debug the code in, in, the, in the website as well, um, uh, in the complete website to look, looking at all the Joomla code. Um, last thing I wanted to show is uh, what if you want to use secure FTP from inside of VGPS code? Um, and to do that, I installed the SFTP extension. This is the SFTP extension. And when you want to use the SFTP extension, you have to create a configuration file for that, uh, like so. And uh, let me explain what that does. So again, in my uh, workspace, I'm going to add a new file, sftp.json. Paste the configuration here. And what this does is um, you have to define the path where your SSH config file is. And, and then you have to define uh, what SSH keys uh, the SFTP client needs to use. So I've got here the host DB, uh, DB dev, which is my birthday development site. This is the root folder. Uh, and upload on save is false. And what this does is uh, every time you can, uh, if you put this, if you set this to true, and every time you save a file, um, the SFTP client uploads it to the website. That is not what I want. I want to work through uh, uh, commits or uh, uh, that's the way that I want to uh, deploy code. Um, and if you've got this running, you can say SFTP config. And then I say, and then you're going to say what uh, file, what configuration do you want to use? I want to use the configuration for my repository. And then I can say um, to what profile do you want to, uh, 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 what profile do you want to um, SFTP to? Um, let me see how this is working. Yeah. This would be a JSON, and then I can define uh, my profile. And then it says profile file unexpected end of JSON input. Okay, I probably made a mistake here. Copy this file, save it here, save, send profile. Ah, now it's now it's seeing the profile. So I can choose for the development side or the live side. And once this is active, now I can say for a file in my configuration uh, or in my in my repository, I can say this file, upload this file to my development environment. Or when I switch profiles, I can switch to the live profile. Then I can upload this file to my production website. You can also uh, there's a bit of a it's not, that's not available. I thought you could also open a, a remote site, but that doesn't seem to work now. Um, see if I can SFTP config. 
Okay, this is all. No, that's, that's not available. So this is the, this is the way that you can also use SCTP straight from your um, uh, VS Code environment. That's actually all I had to say and to demonstrate. Um, like I said, all my scripts will be available later this week in a public repository. Uh, repository. Um, I'm also working in converting all these scripts to uh, a Windows environment so you can use them also on, on Windows uh, uh, 11. Um, uh, I don't think that will be ready this week, uh, hopefully next week, uh, but I will let you know on uh, Masmos what uh what, what uh how, how fast that goes and how far i uh, i am that's actually what i wanted to show thank you that was amazing and you, you did it in time <laughs> <laughs> that's really really good that's that's one gary did you manage to record it <laughs> it was a bit messy now and then but um that's no, the same no. with demo Don't you dare say that. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, we we kind of went into the deep end of the pool, but it was all. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and Rene, you were saying that you figured all of that out just in one afternoon. And I got it one afternoon, and I I I, I uh, when when writing all these scripts, I I, I quite a lot quite a lot use uh, use ChatGPT to. Um, um, so if I, if I want to do something, I, I just say to ChatGPT, I've got this script, this, I need, this needs to do it, I need to get a configuration, you need to store this and this and this uh, over there. And well, these scripts were very, very useful and I had to do just very little bit of tweaks uh, to, to get them up and running. And the, the great thing about these SSH keys, um, um, I use a local machine, uh, let me share my screen again so it's really, well, I, can, I can demonstrate it. Um, uh, use the entire screen. Hello. I uh, hope you can see it. Uh, I use Forklift. Forklift is a, uh, a file browser for um, for the Mac. Um, what I can do here is I can say, okay, I want to connect, go, and then connect. Uh, I want to connect to a site. Uh, for example, the birthdays, uh, the development site. Uh, and as a server, I just need to specify the name that I defined in my SSH config file, which is dd dev, and I, I got to pick what um, uh, what exactly the uh, the username was. That's user dev bird one. That I, I didn't make that up. That's what my hosting environment did. So this is the host name dd dev, and this is the username. So if I copy this and paste that here as a username, that's all I need to specify. I, I'm going to add this to my favorites. Uh, which is the SFTP folder and then add. That's it. And then I can go to uh, some folders or some, some applications here. And you see here it's now added, birthplace development. And if I click on that, it opens my website through SSH. Here are the public HTML files and here are the files in my SFTP client. And by simply defining just the the, the, the configuration name in my SSH config and my username. And I, I can do the same with the production website. So if I can go here and then go to go and connect, and then that's birthplace uh, production. Uh, and if you saw here that the host name is BD prod, put that here. And then the username is birthday one. Put the username here, uh, add to favorites, add, okay. 
And then here's the production. And if I click then, this is my production server. Um, it's got a PHP FPM log, an error log, public HTML. These are the production uh, um, files on my server. So it, I found that by setting up these SSH config keys, so to speak, I can use them in, in, in virtually every application that uses SSH. So that's really, really convenient. And um, uh, you talked about, uh, Philip, that it, it will be best to create for every site or, or server that you use to create a separate key. I do that as well. I, I remove, I've removed a lot of my keys. Um, uh, and I've also removed a lot from my config settings. I've got much more hosts here. But um, it's really simple to just create a key um, uh, and copy a key and upload it to any environment you want and use it in my SFTP clients, which is so convenient. I was, I, I was amazed that it, that works straight off the bat. And I think it works exactly the same on Windows. Mm. Yeah, I, I've been pleasantly surprised at how solid it is and how, how well it works. Um, yeah. As I've been working through, it's, it's it's definitely not as flaky as I've had with some systems. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm excited at what I'm discovering. And like you, I'm I've I've moved a bit away from ChatGPT. My favourite's Claude. Um, me and Claude chat quite a lot, and nice. uh, because I like the fact you can make projects in Claude and give it specific files. So I've given it some of my components or modules and said. How can we improve this? How can we improve the security? Yeah, 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 yeah. And all that sort of stuff. And it looks just at those files and brings back um, some really good recommendations. And I've been yeah. doing it um, using AI to expand my knowledge, very similar, saying, you know, yeah. I'd like to do this. Is there a way? And the thing with the internet is you just get so many rubbishy videos and things that just don't answer your question. Whereas with them, the AI that I'm using at the moment, it's like, no or yes here is yeah. how um, yeah. and occasionally it makes mistakes but we usually work around those um yeah. but i'm being a lot quicker to the nuggets that i need yeah um, anyway. um uh, well at, at work we have a fake chat gpt account and i've created a, i created a juno persona in there uh, and the persona is just an environment that you work in. And I said, well, you're an expert in Joomla, you know JavaScript, you know CSS, you know HTML, you know PHP. And so that helps in, in the answers that he finds. But in inside uh, VS Code, I, uh, at work, I use uh, uh, GitHub Copilot. And um, the, the, the project that I'm working on at work is this, this Joomla 5 application where we create all these uh, legal documents for clients. Uh, I'm working on that now for nine months, or no, for a year now. And since day one, I've used GitHub Copilot next to my project. And so the GitHub, the, the Copilot knows where all the code is. It knows how my project is set up. And I, if I ask something, where's this file, or uh, how do I do this? And it's, it, it has quite a good knowledge about the Joomla framework. It hardly... Um, hardly makes mistakes and it's really handy if you want if, if you have questions about php and javascript because i'm not javascript crack and uh, 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 uh but, but using that helps so much you, you can say okay i have boots of five i want you to create a javascript um, that opens a pop-up and does this and does that and that the code is really really good i was quite positive to positively surprised how well it is uh and, and uh, I find uh, ChatGPT very strong in the creation of bash scripts. So I've, I've got so many scripts running uh, on my local machine to set up Nginx, to use MariaDB, uh, to make backups of environments, to make backups of databases, uh, to update sites, uh, all running in bash scripts. And that's, um, that's really helpful. That helped me a lot. Yeah, yeah. Certainly is increasing production, increasing productivity. Really, well, thank really you is. so much. And and would you mind putting the um, links to the uh, GitHub repository and all the things that you are going to be putting out there? Would you mind putting it in the Mattermost um, VS Code channel? Yes, yeah, sure, I will. I will. If you put them in there, I will make sure they're put into the header so we don't lose them, and um, that'd be yeah. really helpful. Yeah. Well, all the local scripts I used that I use to create backups to uh, that sort of things, they all work on my Mac machine. 
because it, it, it's, a, it's a sort of a Unity machine, so that, that helps. And I'm, I'm a long time Unix system administrator. Um, uh, but but it, um, I hope I can get the same functionality uh, together in Windows. If you're comfortable working on the, in, the, in the Windows terminal, it makes my life so much easier. And um, But I do want to extend what, what, what uh, um, uh, for example, Olivier said. No? Um, the guy that talked about the pizza box of fun um, uh, and, and someone else that also uh, 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 um, replied. I don't know the full name because I forgot. Oh, MIL, uh, now MIL said it's, it's still very complicated. It is. It is compli complicated. Um, um, setting up, uh, um, setting up uh, public and private keys, it, it's not for every. I think it's not for everyone. Um, there are quite some tools for Mac available that in, in, um, uh, where you can manage your and, and create keys um, uh, at work and and in my uh, personal environment. I use one password as a password manager, and one password can also generate private and public keys uh, and use them. So, um, um, uh, so so that helps a little bit, but well. I, I found or I, I pinged you. Uh, I think I sent you last week uh, an, an online link to how to um, how to set up uh, different keys if you have, if you have multiple accounts, for example with GitHub, mm -hmm. and that was quite explanatory. It, it wasn't in 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 the, in the video, but it was um, it was in uh, just an explanation in text, and that that already helped a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And it, well, yeah. working on command line, you have to get your hands dirty, but uh, and, and sometimes things break. But you learn from that. And I, I love it. It's the way we program when we're doing our thing.